Hello and welcome to Talking to Introverts. Couldn't remember what I was doing then. <laughs> and Denise and I are looking at each other through the screen. Who's talking? Who's introducing it? Um, so hello everybody. Talking to Introverts, our podcast here on YouTube, all about what it's like to be an introvert in this rather extroverted world in which we live. So today's topic, one that every introvert will resonate with, I'm sure, is small talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think um, for both Sammy and I, hi everyone, I'm Denise Oliver. Sammy has uh, introduced the topic for today. Small talk just makes us cringe. <laughs> In no uncertain terms, I absolutely love being around someone who does small talk really well because I've never mastered the art of it. And I do think there's an art to it. I do think it's something that we can all learn if we choose, but it doesn't come naturally to me. What about you, Sammy? <laughs> no. Um, so I, I always think it's like, what's the point of small talk? Like, I don't. I don't want to discuss the weather with you. I don't want to discuss, I know you'll disagree with this, but I don't want to discuss the football with you. I just like, <laughs> I'm like, if we're going to have a conversation, let's make, let's like just get rid of the chit chat. Let's just go deep. Like, <laughs> I don't have time for anything else. Um, but like you were just saying, I've been in situations, like I've been at dinner parties and things when there's like a room of like 30 people who <laughs> I, hardly know anybody and um I'm sat next to somebody who is a small talker and she can um you know really talk and talk and talk and talk and I quite like sitting next to that sort of person because it means like I don't have to talk that much I mean like you know you're not in the right places and you're hmm and oh yeah and <laughs> You know, and you don't, it's kind of like a bit of a a safe safe place within like, you know, a large group, which could be overwhelming. So I like people who small talk a lot because I don't have to then. <laughs> yeah. But I tell you something I don't like about it is it's that you never really go deep. You never really get to discuss anything. And I often come away from a situation like that feeling like, Something's been left unsaid. I just, yeah. I, I can give you an example of this. Um, so over the bank holiday weekend, went to see some very, very dear friends, been friends for years, ever and ever. And um, one of them just happened to say, I don't even know, in a small talk, it bounces around, doesn't it? And my head's like, oh my God, <laughs> how do people keep up with this? Can we just stick to one topic, please? Um, anyway, she just happened to mention that um, about a year ago, she felt really unwell, nothing specific. She just didn't feel right. She'd noticed that foods weren't working for her. She was at a garden centre and she just turned to her husband and said, I don't feel well. And he's a doctor. So he's like, go and see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> doctors don't do sympathy very well I'm just saying it's a generalization but of all the doctors I know husband included they don't do caring <laughs> very well at all no you go and see someone <laughs> so she did and on her blood test she found out that she was pre-diabetic well I'm really interested in anything like that so I wanted to dive into an in-depth conversation about being pre diabetic what that meant for her a year ago what she's done where she's at now was I able to do that nope <laughs> because it, suddenly the whole room was in uproar about something else it's like oh can I just get into this conversation over here anyway I did corner her later <laughs> and uh, I did ask her grilled her really but she was very open to it about what it had been like for her because I do think that there's there is a place for small talk, this sort of very light level, almost trivial conversation. To my mind, it's trivial. What's the point? Mm. Uh, conversation, this sort of chit chat type stuff. I do get it. And it can make can put people at their ease in a, a situation where you don't know someone. But I when I when I was like in deep conversation with her, 
suddenly someone was listening to her, just asking a question. She could really open up. And I think I'm that person. If you want to open up about something and I'm in your company, come seek me out and we'll go and sit in a corner and I'll ask you questions and you can tell me everything that's going on. Mm. Otherwise, I I don't remember chit chat. I find myself I find myself being around people who are really good at it and think, I must remember what they talked about, but I don't because it's like meaningless to me. So it's just like, hmm. Yeah. My um my partner is very good at small talk. Like doesn't matter where we are, he will find somebody to talk to. Um and <laughs> We were on a uh, holiday early in the year and um, we were away for a week and got to, you know, kept seeing the same sort of people. So we'd have a chat with them and everything. And he was saying to me that he reckons he's like a week is his limit. And then he reckons people would find him boring. I was like, oh, that's quite interesting because although he's good at the small talk, he obviously feels that he's not good in inverted commas at like the deeper conversations which he, he is we have them all the time um but it was just interesting to see that you know somebody who's quite outgoing and good at the small talk also has those little underlying um doubts about himself <clears throat> interesting so, isn't it you yeah. you do see him as more much more extrovert don't you yeah, much more than I am. Yeah, my husband the same, much more extrovert. It's like, uh, look, while he needs his own space, he's never quiet. There's always mm. music on or there's a, he's listening to an audio book at the same time as he's watching um, something to do with his golf swing. On you, you know, he has lots of sound. He can never, he hates being quiet. It doesn't work for him at all. Um, and so when he's like, been on his own he then wants someone to talk to and he'll often go out and find a neighbor to have a chat with because <laughs> he knows i i'm not interested in just having a chat mm. you know i like a deep and meaningful conversation which he often shies away from it's it's interesting really i think there's a place for everyone but <clears throat> introverts and small talk it's it can be excruciating mm. i'm standing there if someone else is an introvert and i i'm thinking oh golly I feel like my chit chat is just wasting someone's time. Mm. Like the weather, like you say, the football, because I watch the football. I love a good game of football. Like the women's World Cup final was excruciating. Um, oh, God, we played so well. And yet Spain were marginally better. There you go. Bit of small talk. Um, <laughs> but I don't remember the names of the players. I don't remember who scored the goals. I don't know the detail of that. I've just enjoyed the match. And that's the the level I can do small talk at. But when I'm with someone else, like my eldest son's very much an introvert, but oh my God, he does information so well. He'll then talk about all the players and their skills. And, and I'm like, I'm blank. <laughs> I, I haven't taken that level of information in. <laughs> So shall we just do the small talk on that? <laughs> and I'm just like, oh god, yeah, we're we're all different, aren't we? What else do you find people who do small talk actually talk about? What have you noticed? Oh, <laughs> oh, I just put you on the spot there. I know it's like like you were saying before. I don't remember the small talk. I'm like, no, nor do I. No. The um, weather is one you mentioned football. <laughs> Yeah, weather is like I don't know. No, if it's that just a cuts British across thing. all languages. Yeah. The weather, um, because my husband is uh, part Maltese, so when we well, I don't go very often. Um, when we have been in Malta, I've always been so surprised. When you go there, the weather is sunny <laughs> usually, and it's hotter than we have here, and. I'm just like, I'm there on holiday. So my expectation is the sun will shine. But then the small talk about the weather is the one degree difference in the temperature and how soon you're going to go and have an afternoon nap, mm. <laughs> your siesta, 
you know, and things like that. And what are the water regulate? Well, this was years ago. What are the water regulations for today? And did you get your washing done on time? <laughs> you know, things like that. It it covers everybody. Talks about the weather. Mm-hmm. Everybody. So what else? What other? I'm trying to think. What other? Um... I mean, holidays is always a good one this time of year, isn't it? It makes me think of you know when you got the hairdressers and the that stereotypical. So you go anywhere? Going anywhere nice this year? <laughs> um, and all of that kind of stuff. Actually, I was in the supermarket yesterday, and um, in the vegetables bit, and there was a guy in a you know a motorized uh, wheelchair thing and asked me to um, pass him the a packet of tender stem broccoli and then went into this whole like conversation with me about how it's nicer than like the big head of broccoli and I'm like hmm and that was like my response I'm like yes I agree there's nothing else I can (laughs) contribute to this right now (laughs) yeah a long stream of why tender stem broccoli you feel is nicer than the big head broccoli yeah it doesn't compute does it (laughs) you don't have anything to compute contribute on that level if it was all about the growing conditions and the country it had come from and (laughs) more more like that then we'd probably find it easier I had an incident um not so long ago when I was walking Jessie Dog and um we were coming up anyone who knows Chester and um Grosvenor Park we were coming up the side of the park uh, with the river behind us and there's these um, tall houses where the garage is on the ground level but they live above and one of the garages was open but Jesse loves these garages for some reason and there's often little piles of leaves caught uh, around the edges of them so she goes snuffling around anyway this particular morning one was open and there was a guy in his like recycling gear and his bike was up tipped and he had um like a a rowing machine you could see in um in just inside the garage and never ever going to put a car in there and um she just stopped and looked at him and he looked at her and we carried on just like literally like two inches while she's snuffling and if there's anyone I do small talk with it's the dog (laughs) it's just like this is crazy I'm like oh you're a good girl Jess oh my goodness oh what's this oh blah 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 like nothing in depth at all obviously she's a dog and um <laughs> she just looked at him and she barked at him and he's like oh you're cute you know what's your name like you do with animals like they're going to yep. tell you and uh, I said oh she's called Jessie he said oh that's nice she looks very cute and he turned away from me and went back to what he was doing and she shuffled up a little bit and then he suddenly turned around again and he went, and how are you? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was, oh, that wasn't okay. I was caught completely unawares by, the, <laughs> by this very amiable young man. He was sorting his bike out. Um, I, um, you know, like, um, well, I'm, uh, how am I today? What do I tell a complete stranger? What do I say? And then it's only later I said, I thought to myself, I can't, A, I can't remember what I said back to him. It will have been something about walking the dog, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then B, it's like, I didn't ask him how he was. Will he think I'm rude? <laughs> and all these thoughts, because as anyone who identifies as an introvert knows, it can take a while for your thought processes to come on yeah. board, <laughs> especially when it's about small talk and that, you know, just smiling and saying hello to someone. Oh, God. Oh, I don't know. It is um, it is one of those topics that I find dog walkers are particularly good at, whether they're extrovert or introvert, because you have the dogs to talk about, mm. you know, on a very it's surface level. It's interesting what you were saying about, like, the man with his bike talk to Jesse, the dog, first. It's like, that's such a, I don't know if it's, like, just an introvert thing or just generally I will talk to the dog and like completely ignore the human (laughs) it's like I'm sorry you're here as well oh sorry um but yeah I'll talk to dogs like you know if I pass them um but yeah well we do don't we And, and I think I don't think it can be established on a dog walk whether someone's 
particularly introvert or extrovert, because we do talk about the dogs. We talk mm. about what they look like. Oh, she's so cute. What sort of dog is this? That we've no idea what sort of dog Jess is. She's a rescue dog from Romania. Got talking to a lady the other day in the park. She's like, oh, my friend rescued a dog from Bulgaria. She was covered in tattoos on her tummy. Oh, really? What's that about? Well, it's something to do with dog bait, dog fights and baiting and things like that. Because what interested me about that was that Jessie's got a tiny tattoo on her tummy. And we've never, no one's ever said what that might be about. Mm. But apparently there's some sort of code um, okay. over in Eastern Europe. Um, to do with dog fights and things it's like oh our poor little Jess has been in a dog fight she's only got one tattoo thank the lord it's tiny you wouldn't see it now because she's so covered in fur she had hardly any when we got it and this lady's going on yeah my dog's this and my dog's that and her name is such and such I've had her for so and so no idea who this woman is where she lives you know how often does she walk in the park don't know and she knows no more about me, but she knows that Jess is from Romania. We don't know what breed she is, and she's got a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the joys of small talk. So, yeah, so we can talk about the weather. We can talk about our holidays. Definitely talk about dogs if you're on a dog walk. That's the only thing we talk about. The dog's condition, the number of times they've been to the vet. <laughs> <laughs> all of that but never ever introduce ourselves <laughs> no, no. you know and there are very few of the people that I see regularly dog walking very few it's like what else oh football we've said mm -hmm. I guess um uh when this recording goes out we'll have tipped into September Christmas is coming Christmas is oh, a good God. one <laughs> doing anything, anything nice for Christmas this year <laughs> I always no. think it's funny though when, pe like, going back to the holidays, when people say, "Are you going anywhere nice this year?" I'm like, "No, I just thought I'd go somewhere really horrible." <laughs> Who wants to go somewhere nice? <laughs> just like, what? 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 I don't understand the question. But it was interesting what you were saying um, about going back to the guy with his bike, and he <laughs> asked you how you were, and then later you're like, "Oh, I didn't ask him how he was." Like, I have been in that situation so many times, so back many years ago now when I was <clears throat> um doing bar work like in in like the local pub you'd see the same people like pretty much day in day out but definitely every week you know the same people that come in and they'd come in and say oh hi yeah how are you and I'd like reply but wouldn't ask like <laughs> how they were in, and they'd be like I'm very well, thank you. I'm like, oh, shit, yeah, I meant to ask, aren't I? I meant to, like, <laughs> reciprocate the conversation. Uh, but I'm just like, just give me your order, I'll give it to you, take the money, that's it, done. Like, exchange over. <laughs> 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 Possibly not the best working environment for an introvert. Um, but I have to say, though, not saying that introversion and shyness always go together, but I used to be very shy and working in bars from the age of 18 gosh that knocks it out of you <laughs> you have to be you know you have to interact with people it was exhausting though is it too peopley <laughs> so peopley um <laughs> i remember um one of the bars i worked in and we'd just chat with the amongst the staff and um I remember people saying, like the staff saying, oh, I, you know, I went home whenever and I couldn't get to sleep straight away. So I watched a bit of telly and had to have a, a cup of tea to wind down. Like, wow, I'm like home, head on the pillow. I'm out. <laughs> it's like, I do not have that problem. But now, now that I understand like the whole introversion thing and how our energy works, it's like, yeah, I'd, I'd like to spend all of my energy. It's like, I need to recharge now. Yeah, and that's the difference, isn't it? Anyone who's more extrovert, they, they have been recharged by all those mm. people and those conversations and they don't know what to do with it. So they have to have some sort of discharge before they can mm. sleep. I can identify with that going back to um, meeting up with friends over the bank holiday weekend. We got, got in and I like sorted all the bags and everything out because we've taken a load of things with us and put everything away grabbed a drink and I'm like right I'm off to bed <laughs> I'm off to bed because the drive back had been pretty 
tricky as we got to Chester because it was raining so hard. Oh, my goodness. So the traveling conditions just as we came into Chester were pretty hairy. And so I needed to sort of let go of that. I grabbed a drink and my husband's settling down to watch the telly. It's like quarter to 11 at night. And I'm like, I, I'm off to bed. I, I, I'm i done. He's like, no, I, I just need to unwind. And it's like you just said, the people, you know, he's got a cup of tea. He's got a snack. The golf's on. I'm like, I'll see you in the morning. And I literally had a drink, you know, got ready for bed, got into bed, didn't know anything until the next morning. And he's like, didn't come up to bed till one in the morning. Like, how could you do that? <laughs> but that's the thing. He was energised by all the conversation and the mm. people, whereas I was just like, I'm done peopling for the weekend. Thank you, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> so here's another topic, anything to do with hobbies. So when I think about that weekend, I did two of my hobbies over the weekend. One was gardening. Could always Anyone who's a gardener can always find conversation around that. Um, and like you, I like crafts and sewing and stitching. So I did a lot of stitching on my um, K-Facet. It's called Cherries, the design. I've had it for years and <laughs> never got it, never started it and never done anything with it. Determined this year it will be finished. Um, and so sat for hours on my own just stitching. And <laughs> when, because uh, my eldest son and his wife were here, I'd be like, if you know, they just knew not to engage me in conversation. They just knew, you know. Don't bother her. She's fine. Um, and then when I didn't want to speak to anybody, I go do some gardening as well because mm. nobody wants to help me with that. So I'm fine. That's great. Cool. Leave me alone. Off I went digging. I was back Sunday morning. Or was it Monday? I think it was the Monday. I was up um, early. I woke up like half six. And by half seven, I was gardening. It's like, oh, it's so nice so quiet even the birds aren't very loud there's no people there's no cars going by it was just like that sense of oh now I'm recharged now I can do today okay who wants to talk to me today because I'm ready but it like took two days from the day that we met up with friends to that that then mid-morning being ready to actually be involved in anything again um I am um, the older I, I get, the more time on my own I need. <laughs> I um, came across a term the other day that I thought was quite interesting, the introvert hangover. <laughs> and it's kind of what you just described. Yeah. So you like you think if somebody's been out for a, like a big night, night out because it's bank holiday weekend and it'll take them two days to recover from it. It's, it's kind of the same thing. It's like we, we over peopled um, and then it takes two days to get over it. But I thought it was a really yeah, good term. That's a really, really good. good term. That's exactly <laughs> it. Gosh, yeah. I mean, there have been times, I have to say, where I've been overpeopled and have actually felt quite ill. Headaches, mm. you know, just so exhausted in my body, wanting to sleep all day because it's just been too much. Um, just like, like very distant memories of hangovers now because I don't have alcohol anymore. But people hang, oh, hangovers from being too too peopley, too involved. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Who knew? Never thought of it like that before. That's a revelation to me. I know. I was the same. It's like, oh, yes. That's exactly what it's like. I get it. Yeah. Any other small talk? Anything? I was going to say, have we, have we small talked about small talk? Food. <laughs> Food's a good small talk. If you can remember to actually include it in your small talk conversation repertoire. <laughs> I don't often. <laughs> Oof. Um, it was, I mean, going back to the bank holiday weekend, it just so happens that being at this friend's house, they are such foodies. They're amazing cooks, you know, kitchen cooks, phenomenal. And the food was incredible. So, that does open up conversation like, oh, what's in the stuffed mushroom? Oh, my God, look at the chocolate tort. How have you made that? Whose recipe is it? Well, it's Angela Hartnett's. And then there's a whole conversation about Angela Hartnett. But I didn't get the recipe or the ingredients, <laughs> which is what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it's small talk. But can I have more depth, please? Um, but I also understand how with 
uh, being an introvert and enjoying the that the detail and wanting to ask questions and hear more that actually in some instances it can almost um like bring the mood down because it's not like light and light-hearted and I don't think it's any um coincidence that both you and I in our own way are coaches and do a great job one-to-one it's mm-hmm. just dead easy for us to be in that situation to assess the person and what's going on for them dump a relevant question into their universe that may never have occurred to them because that's how we work and yeah. um i have to remind myself that when i'm around a table with people that i'm not doing my job this is how people interact mm. it's all, and i and i recognize the other introvert in the group who when he spoke, it sort of brought the lightheartedness down because it was depth that he was looking for. And it's just like, he's not doing it on purpose. He can't help himself. (laughs) I recognise it. I know what that's like. (laughs) Oh, dear. I think another thing with, like, small talk, kind of along the same sort of lines, is, like, I think what I, a part of it that I dislike is, like, it feels so fake yeah so if, if you say like oh how are you today and the natural response is, oh yes I'm fine I'm like but then you know you have like if it's a person that you then go into further conversation with you find out that they're not fine so why did they say they were fine because that's like what you're meant to do in small talk exactly yeah Small talk is very much, it runs on and on and on, doesn't it, from one topic to the next. Mm. Um, chit-chat is what it is. It's just that, that um, I'm, I'm using light-hearted. It is light. It's no one wants to go into depth. And someone says, hi, how are you? They actually don't want to know how you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a string of words. They might as well yeah. just say hi. Hi, passing you on the street right now. Can't stop. But no. Hi, how are you? <laughs> um, I know it's a, it's an odd thing. Um, yeah, I've I, never been, never been good at it. Don't know if I'm ever... having um, when I do one on one sessions online with clients, and they you know they book a time slot like a set amount of time, and I always like we do the hi you okay kind of bit at the beginning, and then like okay let's make the most efficient use of this time. So let's cut the chit chat and get straight into it. And that's my way of like, I don't want to do the small talk. Let's just get to the good stuff. Yeah. But obviously in that kind of situation, like you were saying, when we're coaching our clients, they're not paying for small talk. They're paying for the good stuff. But yeah, it's also like, I know from my side, it's like, I'm just like getting getting out of doing the small talk. Yeah, I do have to recognise, though, that if I've got an extrovert in front of me, they need that. They mm-hmm. somehow have to have that as part of their talk. It, it is, they don't want to know anything from me. They It, it is all about them. And I have to recognise that to get into the deeper stuff, they have to be allowed to just say, you know, the first thing that's coming to them Um and it's not necessarily anything to do with what's really going on. Mm. So it's then like slowly pushing all of that to one side. And it's like, oh, here we are. <laughs> now we can get to what's going on with you. Uh, and and because of understanding myself and knowing that I don't do small talk, I do, I do quiet really well. And so mm. an extrovert will fill the space. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I do have to cut them off because it's like, no, you've waffled on too long now. What is the point? Why are you here? What is it you mm. want to, you actually want to talk about? What is it you want to um, have help with? And uh, and sometimes I have to say the same question more than once. So it is interesting. Introverts are waiting for me to ask the question. They don't mm. want to do small talk because they don't do it. It just doesn't happen. Hi, how are you? Great. And then they look at me <laughs> <laughs> or not so great. And uh, yeah, it's it's all about this. I just need help with X, Y, Z. It's like, okay, cool. We can do that. And then the other part, the other, the, <laughs> the opposite aspect of that is that with introverts, it can take them a while to warm up to talking about themselves. So I have to be aware of that as well. 
it's funny, aren't we? <laughs> oh, life. Um, I can't think of anything else that um, <laughs> because I don't do small talk. I can't think of anything else that would encompass small talk. What would come under small talk? What else? Children, I guess, if you've got kids. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Says the person who's all of her friends have got children and like to talk about them. Um, and like this. It's a dog trying to get out the door. Um, so I went away with my um, friends that I've known since like nursery like known them for years and years and years and they've all got children and we went away for the weekend earlier in the year and um a thing that really annoys me about well about small talk conversations so one like you were saying before like the conversation just flits everywhere so like i'll be in the middle of a story and then somebody else says something else and then it's kind of like well that was rude like i was talking <laughs> So there was a lot of that involving children. But then when I meet up with my friends and their children are there, like the small talk, and again, you know, you're in the middle of a topic of conversation, and then a child comes up and wants them, and they're like, there's the conversation gone again. I'm like, I just, I was enjoying this conversation. Yeah. Oh, children are around. Yeah, forget having full-blown conversations and actually going from having a beginning, a middle, and an end doesn't mm. happen I remember that I remember <laughs> I'd come home and go so what was the end of that con <laughs> Did, was there an end to that conversation and then you'd see them the next time and ask them and you'd still not get to the end of it because you're interrupted by little Johnny or Joanna needing whatever they needed <laughs> god um those were the days no not really because it was exhausting <laughs> mm. And that's the other thing. If you've got a chatty child and you're an introvert and they're not, oh, my goodness me, that's hard work. We, took, we had a slight deviation into that over the weekend, the bank holiday weekend, about children and how demanding. And once they find they can they can hold a conversation, you know, they can take the conversation away and just talk drivel mm. and everyone has to listen. <laughs> and, <laughs> and how as a mother, you get up in the morning and strap on, strap on this sponge <laughs> that you hope is going to soak it all up. And the, at the end of the day, you'll take it off and be fine. You weren't always, sometimes you were just wrung out. Um, not a, a real sponge, a literal one. Yeah. And um, over the years, it had to get bigger and bigger. Like it was a whole bodysuit. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear and then the thing was to just not take anything that came out of your children's mouths personally because <laughs> <laughs> they're just testing out where they they stand in the world mm. and you just happen to be first in line so yeah. yeah you just learned that so yeah so we we both know that in fact we don't we don't have small talk with each other do we you know, we no. can start a conversation, but we have to go in depth about what what the opening gambit of the conversation is. Mm. You know, we rarely say anything about the weather or, you know, if we're going to talk about a holiday, we want to know what happened in the holiday. Where did yeah. you go? How long did it take you to get there? All of this sort of thing. And once one of us is off talking, the other doesn't interrupt. We just listen. And again, extroverts don't do that. They come in with all sorts of questions. It's like, if you just waited... Two seconds, I would have told you that. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Not all about you, extrovert. Shut up. <laughs> Is what I want to say. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, I have that conversation with my partner a lot. I'm like, well, if you let me finish my sentence, <laughs> I was about to tell you that bit. I do. I honestly believe that an extrovert who does that thinks that they're helping because yeah. they think out loud. So they they have opened their mouths without engaging with in what is actually going to come out of it. And it's not an insult to you in any way. It's just the way they are. Mm. It's just what happens. And it's the same the other way. You ask an introvert a question and they take a while to come up with a response. 
it's not they haven't got anything to say. They're just formatting it in their brain before <laughs> they let it out. If I don't format in my brain before I open my mouth, oof, <laughs> I, I cannot be responsible for what happens. <laughs> uh, often a swear word comes out. Um, yeah, it's we are fascinating, aren't we? I, I love the the species we are on this planet and all the intricacies <laughs> of us. And you and I love to take those intricacies and pull them apart. Mm. But an extrovert just wants to keep it much more, I'm going to say, surface level. They mm. don't tend to do depth. It, and, and I can't be doing with topics that leap from topic to topic to topic. Mm. And there's no end in sight of any of it. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> oh, my word. I'm sure there's a million and ten other small talk yeah we got onto ecosystems and being ecological but during this I, that's one conversation that came up and about whether to have a pond or not to have a pond in the garden and that never finished we never got to the end of that before it moved on to something else and something I was else i'm gonna say i could not have a surface level conversation about that i'd be like in there I'm like no i know no. i know <laughs> i need to explore this I'm literally building the pond well where do we start well you dig a hole <laughs> <laughs> um, and then what do you line it with? And you know, and it's all of this. It's like it's, that, that didn't happen. You know, mm. there wasn't that level. And then somebody mentioned that um, they were going to go and see the Barbie movie. I'm like, it's great. Go and see the Barbie movie. And actually, I did get listened to on that one, but only by one other person in the group. Mm. Um, everyone else started different conversations around it. So then I often feel like I have to shout to be heard. Yeah. And that. And I think extroverts can hear everything. I can't. I literally can't take it all in. It's too much. So there I am yelling about Barbie and the Barbie movie and uh, how uh, how good it is on so many different... That's a movie with lots of levels. It's got very superficial levels, but it's got a lot of deeper um, meaning behind the, the way it's been put together. Very, very good. Very good indeed. Highly recommend it. But it's not. Is it a film for extroverts? No, I think extroverts would like it. It's very colourful. Um, yeah, it's quite a dynamic movie in many ways, many, many ways. So we need to see when my friend goes and takes her daughter and her sister. They all go together, what they think. Mm -hmm. Whether they take my recommendations on board. Let's see. I um, just realised that there's been no mention of my friend Sarah today. My friend Sarah, I've not heard from her for a while. My friend Sarah, not an introvert <laughs> by any stretch of anyone's imagination, um, which is why she likes to travel the world and meet new people and get into conversation with them and apparently make uh, dairy-free banana bread. She showed me that picture. Um, she Did went, you get the recipe, though? No, I didn't. No, <laughs> of course not. Um, no, she was doing a bit of travelling and they had, um, so she's on an island off Papua New Guinea called Bougainville. It's all part of the Papua New Guinea range of islands. So off the coast of New Zealand, back and beyond as far as I'm concerned, because it's so far away. Um, but she's already loving it. So she's there in her capacity as a mental health nurse to help. But as a nurse, she has to do everything because the nearest hospital's four hours drive away. And then she put up some pictures of um, how hard it was raining and landslides and um, what they call, what's it called when a great big hole appears in the ground? Oh, sinkholes. Sinkholes. And that there was a Land Rover in a sinkhole. Oh, a <laughs> oh, great God. big hole. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and everyone helping everyone else out in the pouring rain and covered in mud and everything. And I'm like, oh, what did you choose to go there for? She's like, no, it was fun. That doesn't look like fun to me, but it was to her because she was involved with everyone. Everyone was helping everyone else out. Um, and she's not someone to stand on the sidelines. She's no shrinking violet, that's for sure. Um, so that's the last I heard, but she's clearly fine. Otherwise, I'd have heard from her. Um, mm. So, uh, Just, you yeah. know, she has to get a mention in every episode, doesn't My she? friend Sarah, all one word. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually... Um, talking about what she's doing kind of leads me on to like when you were nursing was there a lot of need for small talk you know like with patients and stuff yeah or was it just the matter in hand again it would depend on um the 
the environment we were in, you know, some patients were too ill. So, I mean, there, there was, there was this unspoken understanding that you would say pleasant things mm. like like a broken record really uh, and occasionally if there was time and the person was compass meant to say on an orthopedic ward where they'd had an operation because we used to keep them in bed a lot longer than we do now so anyone who'd had a hip replacement years ago was in bed for 10 days now they get them up as soon as they're awake <laughs> and send them home. Um, times have changed. And so they were immobile. And if they weren't being um, attended to, so if it wasn't nurse to patient environment, because let's face it, it's, you know, you see a lot of people, you know, everything you see. Um, but sometimes they did need someone just to sit with them because they, they were, they had a lot of fear around what was going to happen when they mm. left the hospital, how they were going to manage all of that. And that was the times I always enjoyed was sitting in the chair next to the bed, and just letting them just say what they needed to say. Mm. Um, and so um, I guess I've always been, I've always known I preferred that one-to-one -one thing rather than the massive group meetings and all of that. I hated the war drowns. They were horrible. Hated that. Um and if you think about the close proximity a nurse is with a patient, and um, I still remember a lady on a gynae ward, um, she's like, I have no idea where my dignity is right now. She said, I've never had my body stared at by so many pairs of eyes. She said, I feel so ashamed and embarrassed about why I'm here and what's going on. And it was in that moment that I just looked at her and I just pulled the curtains around and I just said, you know what? When you leave here, your dignity is at the front door waiting for you. It's a hospital. No one's judging your body. We're just here to look after you as best we can. And that, in that sort of instance, you can get through to someone. And she just went, God, you're right. No one knows anything about me other than why I'm here, other than I'm Mrs. So-and-so in a bed with an illness. Exactly. You know, so we haven't got time to go in depth this to everything that's ever happened in your life to get to know you. I said, so when we're you know, gyne looking at your nether regions, we are literally focusing on those. <laughs> They're very personal to you, but we don't see them like that. Otherwise we yeah. can't do our job if we do. And she was just like, never thought of it like that. It's like, yeah, your dignity is at the front door. You'll be fine. It's waiting for you there. <laughs> I said, but if there's anything you don't understand about what's going on, then, you know, if I'm not busy, just call me over and we can have a chat. But again, and I don't know how it is these days, all I ever hear is staff shortages and, you know, people just being so discontent with the whole setup. I bet people don't, nurses, doctors haven't got time to talk to patients. Mm. Um, just don't have time for it, unfortunately. So, yeah. But there was, I mean, there was always that, you're always polite. You know, good morning, Mr. So-and-so, how are you? Knowing physically how they were from their <laughs> signs and symptoms, but, you know, anything in depth about how are you mentally was, we didn't have time to touch on. We just couldn't go there. Um, that's what the hospital chaplain was for. <laughs> we hoped. <laughs> um, and even then we weren't really sure. Um because they were very, everyone's very busy in the hospital, always have been, and it's it's getting worse, I think. Your sister-in-law works in hospital, doesn't she? Yeah, she works um, ICU and high dependency. So, and I'm like, I think that's where I'd work if I was a nurse. I wouldn't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I realised that I never wanted to do accident and emergency, because you're talking to a lot mm. of people. Um, and so eventually when I went into orthopaedics, um, orthopaedics is great because it's um, on the whole people get better. So it has got a feel good factor to it. It can take a while depending on the condition of the body um, as it's, you know, whatever's going on for it. And although I ended up working in an orthopaedic clinic, they were they it wasn't constant we did have times of quiet where we had to restock the clinic and all things like that and so it that worked for me 
And then again, I, I worked on the district and I like that. I like going into people's homes and being one to one with them. And you could only do so much in the day because you were traveling as well. So you got that time. I got that time on my own in the car uh, to be quiet. But I didn't see it like that at that time. I didn't know anything about introverts and extroverts at that point. As I say, I only read about it when um, Quiet by Susan Cain came out. And um, then it was like, oh, that's <laughs> that's what I'm not going to say wrong with me. And I was like, no, it's not a wrongness. It's just who I am. It's just what, yeah, just how we're made. Anything else on small talk? I think we've small talked about small talk pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have. I think we're doing a good job. So can I say, are we done? I think we're done. So if you've got any comments you'd like to make about small talk, please do um, below this recording. We'd love to hear from you. If you've got any subjects you'd like us as introverts to discuss, then let us know that as well. Uh, and uh, we will go there on your behalf. <laughs> God help us. <laughs> what am I asking for? <laughs> Anything else? Are we done? I think we're done. I think we're done as well. So we look forward to being with you again a couple of weeks time. Um, stay well and um, yeah we'll be back uh, we're talking to introverts very soon bye for now bye <laughs>